Hey everyone, Eric with Rock and H, and it's not uncommon for guys to have a terrible time putting hood pins in these tiny diecast trucks or replacing the pins that keep the front steering wheels on. Well, I've come up with a better solution and I'm here to share it with you. Let's get to work. This lesson is primarily for diecast promotions trucks or DCP as they usually have pins or rivets that hold different parts on versus uh, mashed rivets. Uh, so what I'm going to show you will work well for diecast promotions trucks and other trucks that are assembled very similarly. This particular truck is a diecast promotions T800. They have a rivet that keeps the hood on so it can open and close. You have to you have to drill that rivet out or else use a side cutter and kind of wiggle that rivet out. Uh, it can be kind of a pain to do, but definitely can be done. But then you have to come back in and pin your hood back on. Now, if you're using a Peterbilt or say a Kenworth, this is a Kenworth frame without any accessories. It has a hole right here where a rivet is, a pin, excuse me, is pressed into the die cast through the hood hole. And what I'm about to show you works very well for Kenworth. It works on these T-800s here, the W-900, and then it also works for the Peterbilt and many other brands of trucks. The first thing we'll do is we are going to go ahead and remove this bumper because it's in the way. So we'll just go ahead and drill that out quick. And there we go. So that's ready for the next step. Now we're going to use a tiny tap to thread those holes so we can use a tiny screw to keep our hood on. Most of these die-cast trucks do, do not have a hole quite as big as the T-800 and you need a wrench to get the tap to turn. As a bonus to our lesson, we're going to go ahead and add these Canada coat of floats to the front of this truck as this particular replica has floats. So we'll take these front tires off and we're going to use screws to hold these tires on as well. We're going to use our tire removing tool. You can buy these in the Rock and H store, rockandhfarmtoys.com. And if you're wondering how I'm doing that, I'm going between the tire, just like so, and the front suspension, and squeezing. There is a pin right there that holds that tire on. Now, this tip also works for all sorts of die-cast trucks. You can actually reuse these pins if you're so inclined. I used to do that until I found these screws, and now I use these exclusively to reattach the wheels. The links for these screws will be in the description and I'll link to everything that I'm showing you here. Before we add the wheels and the screws, we do need to drill out these holes on these Canada coat of floats a little bit. A 16th inch bit works really well. After we've drilled out the wheels, we're going to go ahead and use our tap and add some threads to the wheels. Now we'll add our screw to the spindle. We use our Allen wrench to hold that screw in place. Then we'll turn the wheel onto the screw. Now, what's really nice about using these screws on these wheels is one, you're insured of a snug fit every time. Plus, you can kind of use these screws as a parking brake, which is really cool. So if you set these on a shelf for display purposes and you do not want these wheels to, you don't want the truck to roll off of a shelf accidentally or if somebody bumps it, look at that. You have a parking brake here. And if you want to have some rolling feature, you can just back that screw off until it rolls to the level that you want and you still have a really nice snug fit on the wheel. 
Now we'll add a screw to the other side. To get your Allen wrench in here, you may need to turn the wheels right or left, depending on how you want to hold them, and then put your Allen wrench into the hex head. And there we have it. Our wheels are on. They fit nice and snug. They don't turn too freely, so there is a little bit of friction there. So if this is bumped on a shelf, perhaps it won't roll off. Next, we'll add our hood. The factory holes for the hood pins will be too small for these screws, so you'll want to go ahead and either drill the hood holes out, or what I like to do is, is take a small pin file and put it in my drill in reverse and then ream the hole out. One thing to keep in mind, the reason I like the file so well is because if it's going in reverse, it's not biting and grabbing at the die cast, less chance we're going to break these pivot arms right here. If you use a drill bit, you can grab that die cast and actually break these off. So I would caution using a drill bit in favor of using a file in reverse in your drill. And make sure it's in reverse because it will not grab the die cast like it will going forward and it'll bite and break this, not to mention you can get injured in the process. So always go in reverse if you use a file in your drill. Next, we're going to do a test fit and make sure the screws fit on both sides, and they do. Now we're ready to assemble. We'll go ahead and line up our holes now. And the same idea applies here. If you don't intend to make the hood function very much, you can tighten up them screws as much as you like. You can leave them a little bit loose so you have some wiggle room when you go back to assemble, or you can keep them nice and tight. I normally get mine snug to begin, and then if I need to adjust the tension to make the hood line up with the cab well, I'll go ahead and loosen those up as needed. And there you go, a nice clean way to assemble your hood and attach your wheels. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you share it with a friend, be a blessing and help someone out, give them a hand. Support my channel by subscribing to diecastlab.com. Thanks for watching.